Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It, it saddens me that in the middle of this political crisis, what we have is a pathetic masquerade from this government, pretending that it is competently arranging our departure from the European Union, when in fact everyone knows that there is no agreement as to how that departure will take place, and without an agreement, it is simply not possible to plan in a proper way how it would take place. And the responsibility for that is entirely of this government's own making, a mixture of its bellicose intransigence in its negotiations with our European partners and its arrogant contempt in trying to establish a political majority in this chamber and using the Brexit vote for its own narrow political ends. And now it's in a situation where the only thing it can do, the only thing it can possibly do, is contemplate crashing out of the EU without a deal. Well, I have to remind the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster that that approach would be illegal because we have passed a law to say that we will not leave the European Union without, uh, with no deal. And therefore, first of all, I want to ask him, why is he preparing this document, which is called Preparedness for No Deal? Perhaps it should be called Preparedness for Breaking the Law, since that's essentially the course that he's now engaged in. Why is he preparing this rather than trying to properly come back to this House with proposals which we can debate as to what negotiations are having with the European Union. Because to my eyes and to those of many colleagues, it looks as if this Government isn't in the least bit serious about getting a deal at all, that in fact it's engaging in gesture politics, deliberately setting conditions that it knows cannot be met in order to come back here and try and blame everybody but itself for the consequences that result. And I have two specific questions in terms of the state. Uh, the, leader of the, the, the spokesman for the opposition referred to the IFS report. This is a damning report that has come out this morning from the Institute of Fiscal Studies. This tears away all credibility for there being an economic case for Brexit. And the IFS is saying that the difference, the difference between asking for an extension and considering this matter further or crashing out with a no deal in three weeks' time is 4% of GDP. 4% over the next three years. I would invite the Secretary of State to tell us, does this now mean that as we complete the first decade of Tory austerity, he and his government are preparing for a second decade? Because that is surely the consequence of the course of the on. And finally, Mr Speaker, can I ask about uh, the status of EU nationals? Because he makes much of this, saying that everything is rosy in the garden. The truth is, that the 1.5 million people that he refers to have got some status. Most of them have got what is called pre-settled status. Uh, yeah. It is not at all sure that they are going to get settled status. And if he genuinely believes, and if it is the government's policy, that European nationals are living in this country should not suffer any disbenefit to their rights as a result of Brexit, then will he commit now? to let each and every one of them have a permanent right to remain in this country. I am very grateful to uh, the Honourable Gentleman for Edinburgh East for his questions. On the, on the first question about the IFS report, uh, we respectfully disagree with some, not all, of the IFS's conclusions, because um, an extension would only uh, generate further uncertainty, and that extension would involve us not only continuing to pay money into the European Union, that uncertainty would mean that the investment decisions that business wants to make would still be put on pause. Business leaders, including many of those who backed Remain, uh, like uh, the, uh, the founder of Carphone Warehouse, have argued now that we need to leave, deal or no deal, in order to have the certainty on which to plan for the future. That is what business wants overwhelmingly, to leave with the deal, but at least to ensure that we have certainty. He also asks about EU nationals, and he makes a very, very fair point. Uh, it is the case that actually a majority of those who have been granted settled state, who have been granted status have been granted settled status. Pre-settled status is for those people who have not been in the country or can't demonstrate that they've been in the country for five years. But once they've been here for five years, they move automatically and smoothly to settled status. And it is the case, it is the case that the number of people who have applied for a status is increasing every day, and it is also the case that our offer is significantly more generous than that for uh, all save a tiny number of EU member states. Uh, those were the serious questions he, he asked. I know that the Honourable Gentleman used to be uh, the uh, proprietor of a comedy club um, in, uh, uh, in Scotland, uh, which is why I felt that he was trying his hand at some Dadaist and surrealist comedy when he accused this party of trying to establish a majority for political purposes in the House of Commons. 
That's Scottish National Party policy, trying to establish a bogus, broken-backed majority with Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister for blatantly political purposes. As for using Brexit for its own ends, it's the Scottish National Party that has been attempting to weaponise this argument in order to push its separatist and sectarian agenda. And as for gesture politics, that is the hallmark and stock and trade of the SNP. I'm afraid the Honourable Gentleman was guilty of a psychological phenomenon known as projection, which is accusing your opponents of the sins of which you yourself are guilty. Miller.